you want burgers, hot dogs, some chicken, and ribs. Yes, I'm drinking iced coffee. I know. It I doesn't know. even have any creamer in it. I do, but, well, I, I like coffee, but it's hot as hell in here when we record. So I have to drink like something iced or I'm going to die. Water's know? good for you. Well, water is good, but I wanted something to keep me awake, you know, because I t- traditionally I'm having a cup of coffee while we're doing this or, or beer, although I've been drinking less lately. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> this has been less beer. But um, but yes, yes, I drink iced coffee, even though I hate it. I think iced coffee is a waste of time. But yet you're drinking it. Yes, very much so. You know, it would taste better if uh, it had creamer. In creamer it. is the devil's milk. I'll have you know. <laughs> anyway. No, you're not tuning into Coffee Cast. Uh, this is Night of the... God damn it, I, can't... I, got the... I got the giggles tonight. Welcome to Night of the Horror File, a horror movie or genre movie podcast where I take a horror movie or genre film and show it to my beautiful wife, Brittany. Um, it... What did we watch this week? Friday the 13th, Part 3. That's right. Friday the 13th, Part 3 in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> That's not necessary. But yes, we watched Friday the 13th in 3D, sort of in 3D. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But um, <laughs> well, okay, we've covered the first two movies in the Friday the 13th uh, franchise. Yes. You know, we've covered those. And it's been a while since we last went to Crystal Lake. I, oh, good Lord. When was It was the last Friday the 13th we, we had. I think we covered Friday the 13th Part 2. I guess. Wasn't it? I don't, I don't remember, know. man. It's been a while. I, I think know. we're talking about episode 50 something when we come here. <laughs> Dang. I know that this coming year we're going to cover a lot more of the big franchises, a lot more of the heavy hitters. We're going to we're going to dive into those a little bit more quicker cuz I kind of want to get through those. Uh, but um <laughs> so we can do more weird shit. But uh, but no, it's been a while since we went to Crystal Lake, and with today's feature, Britt is finally going to see, or well, she finally got to see a goddamn ho- hockey mask. Yes. <laughs> yes. Have you been waiting for it patiently? No. Waiting for No. <laughs> Britt is like, I just, I would quit if I wasn't married to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've threatened it a few times. She's, I mean, you look good surrounded by all these movies. Fuck you. I have been cataloging movies um, this entire weekend, and uh, there are stacks of movies all around her. There's folders over here to my side. It's just, it is a, It looks like I own a video store, and I'm taking inventory. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but what was my final count? Because uh, you know, I used to have a sizable collection. I think I had a thousand at one point, but uh, that got you know after a divorce in my past that got <sighs> downsized to about like. But now I have five hundred and sixteen movies. Ugh. Well, actually, five hundred and sixteen uh, physical media items. That's <laughs> yes. not counting the packs of movies I have. You know those like. Four, yeah, they they have uh, four movies. The movie features that have like four movies in them and stuff like that. That's not counting each individual movie I actually own, which is probably double. (laughs) (laughs) Probably (laughs) double that. But um, (laughs) but it's funny. Uh, The hockey mask is such an iconic part of this character, and uh, that that sometimes people who aren't familiar with this franchise are kind of shocked when the first two uh, films of this fucking franchise don't have a hockey mask to be seen right um and this one really it isn't until an hour into it before we get a hockey mask jason which is very interesting but anyway uh now we all know the final girl from part two was jenny and in the early drafts of this flick she was to return only to battle jason in a hospital where he would kill the doctors and the patients sounds kind of like halloween too when you think about it Yes, it's kind of funny. yes. Uh, Amy Steele, who played uh, Jenny, she backed out. So uh, a new story was needed. And now Ron Curse, who wrote part two, was offered the job, but he turned it down, you know, because he didn't. He felt like he was like kind of like, I don't want to be known as the Friday the 13th guy. Oh, right. <laughs> he didn't right. want to be typecasted. Um, so 
husband and wife screenwriting duo, Martin Kitrosser and uh, Carol Watson. Kitrosser would actually go on to work with uh, Quentin Tarantino on almost all his films. Um, They were brought on board instead. Now, after their first draft, Paramount brought in Petro Papesco, or Papescu. I'm sorry, you guys, Oklahoma. (laughs) (laughs) Now, he was brought in to make the script more menacing and dark, kind of more horror to the whole thing. And uh, Papescu would uh, go on to write the and direct the film Death of an Angel, which was a pretty good success at Sundance in the late 80s. Um, the version that was filmed of today's feature contained a lot of contributions from Petru, but he was left uncredited, sadly. Oh. Um, I mean, although, you know, he's hailed later on, you know, Friday the 13th fans. Don't leave anybody uncredited, (laughs) (laughs) even the people who pay Jason, because we talked about it. Most of the people who play Jason up front were stuntmen or pretty much all the people who play Jason were stuntmen. And uh, to the Friday the 13th fans, those people are like gods. (laughs) You know, I do kind of feel like if they had let it stay in the hands of Petru more, uh, maybe even let him direct, uh, this thing would have been a quite a different Friday the 13th. (laughs) <laughs> than oh, yeah. we would know because even this one has some story elements in it that are a little darker than what we've gotten so far you know what i mean yeah yeah we'll kind of discuss those as we go now steve miner who directed part two is back in the director's chair and honestly i don't think is enough is said about steve miner uh, because he really contributed to the snowball effect friday the 13th would have going forward from this you know these movies were making a lot of money already but like once this one got going and then the next one, that's when you saw Jason really enter the public. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Really yeah. take off to where he is now. I mean, he's the most recognizable horror character yes. out there alongside Freddy Krueger. You know. Um, <laughs> now, if you listen to our episode on movie gimmicks, you'll know the early 80s saw a resurgence in 3D movies. Mostly it was used to try to breathe life into a few failing franchises. And after this, Jaws and Amityville took off with 3D, <laughs> which those both of those movies aren't stupendously awesome, but <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're OK. Now, part three. Here, it was used to capitalize on all this, like the early success of 3D film. Also, Paramount had more hands into this film than they did the last film. See, part two, they kind of just, they basically treated it as just another movie, you know, to kind of send out to keep the rights and stuff like that. Right. So they didn't have a lot of hands in that one, but they did in this one. Because now with this one, they're seeing Friday the 13th as an investment. Not just another oh, yeah. crappy movie to throw out. <laughs> right. Um, what the fuck? Oh. So, of course, we have a ton to talk about here today. So let's dive into Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. 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 So the first part of this movie. You know. Is where I hang Lee by his toes and stab him 42 and a half times. By his toes? Ooh, ooh, that's a good Jason kill. I need to see that. Like, How's Jason going to hang somebody? I about Jason there? killing no, you. No, I know, but we should work. they should work that into a uh, Friday the 13th sequel if, <laughs> if this fucking lawsuit ever gets figured the fuck out. What are we going on year 10? <laughs> like, I guess. The I last know. Friday the 13th movie came out in 2009, I believe. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, um, we're still battling in court, everybody. And I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. But anyway, (laughs) in order to get the 3D right in this movie, Paramount's Frank Mancuso Sr., while the script was still in development, mind you, approached Martin J. Sadoff. Now, Sadoff, who did the visual effects for Meteor from – it's a movie called Meteor from 1979. It's – kind of obscure, but it's a very good movie. (laughs) But (laughs) of course I know it, but – but he would go on to be editor on part seven as well, actually. And and on the underrated slasher graduation day from 1981 starring Lene Quigley. Anyway, his job was to figure out how to make this movie literally pop out at you. you know, right. It was his job to figure out the, the, the technology behind the whole thing. So Sadoff settled on using a camera designed specifically for filming in 3D by pioneer Mortimer Marks. It's called the Marks system okay now uh in fact this was actually friday the 13th part three was actually the first to use this all new 3d system 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, the director of photography, Gerald Fell, had a project fall through where he had been researching 3D as well. So you already had the uh, the director of photography <laughs> already well well knowledge with uh, 3D as well. And because he had a, some kind of Peter Pan film he had been working on that like uh, crash and burn and then never took off. Probably like the twentieth incarnation of fucking Peter Pan we get. <laughs> How many Peter Pan movies are there? I have no idea. It's in fucking saint. Not as many uh, not as many as Friday the thirteenth. I don't know. I remember one with a bald <laughs> Hugh Jackman in it as Captain Hook. That was a weird one. What? Yeah, I'm not even joking. That was literal <laughs> he played Captain Hook at one point. But anyway, but but let's get to the movie okay. <laughs> before I talk more. So the first part of this movie is the end of the second movie. Right, right. I think it's the first six minutes of this movie is the last scene of the the last film. Right. Little recap. I don't know. Did that help you? Did you like that? Because we did. We have. I mean, it's been a year or so. I bet since we've done the last one. No. Did you remember the last Friday the Thirteenth pretty well? I mean, yeah, I guess it didn't really matter though. Oh, okay. Because we know, well, well yeah, I you're guess right. We know no, no, who Jason is. Yeah, you're right. It it doesn't really work into this one. Like the, no. the second one story doesn't really work much into this movie because nobody returns. Right, except for Jason. Yeah, except and... for Jason. Which is funny because, like, it's funny to think about, but like these films take place. Well, not the first one. Leave the first one out of the timeline for just a <laughs> second. But like, I think the second one takes place like a year or so after that first one, mm -hmm. and then. You uh, move forward, and this one, this third one, is taking place, like, the next day after that uh, second one. Okay. Like, uh, the, these very early scenes mm -hmm. uh, at the supermarket. We'll get to that. But uh, those take place uh, the night of. Oh, okay. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, the, see, we didn't even need that because, like, like, true. it didn't I mean, really even matter. <laughs> it does. It doesn't, I guess. No. It's just... <laughs> I'm just piecing together a timeline <laughs> nobody asked for. Which is fine, but yeah. like, <laughs> it, if we didn't need the last six minutes of the last. Uh, yeah, one. I get you. I get you. <laughs> Brittany's like, I just, I don't like recaps. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just not necessary. <laughs> of course, right away we get some credits. Um, in fact, I love that 3D that like comes out a little bit and then the rest comes right more out at you. Oh, yeah. Like, if you watch this in 3D, it looks really cool when that happens. Oh, yeah. But um, it, also you get that lovely disco-esque theme, you know. That yes. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this thing. I played it constantly when I was a kid on my Walkman. So while all of you were busting out NSYNC and Britney Spears, <laughs> I was listening to horror themes and Weird Al Yankovic. I was, I was a very disturbed little child. <laughs> I don't know about disturbed. Just a little odd. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Weird Al, uh, that song Nature Trail to Hell that he does is actually influenced by this movie. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Nature I Trail to Hell in 3D. <laughs> That's a good song. Oh, God. I've, I don't think I even know that song. I have weird interests. Anyway, <laughs> now the creators of this catchy theme were music producer Michael Zeger and, uh, of course, Harry Manfredini. Um, now, Michael Zeger made up a band called Hot Ice to do this theme with. So if you ever find this this theme, it's, it's by a band called Hot Ice. <laughs> That's weird. Okay. <laughs> but um, Harry Manfredini, in fact, he the composer, he's still shocked by how this song caught on. Oh, yeah. You know, just how this little simple little disco thing they did just <laughs> ca caught on. Well, because, like, I feel like out of, like, the – the, the early films out of the, all three of these first movies in this franchise, I feel like the third one really started to have fun with it still. Mm -hmm. Like, we're starting to get a little bit more fun. With the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The first one is a whodunit. Like, it's a straight <laughs> mystery, a mystery slasher. The second one still got that little bit of seriousness to it. But this third one, there's a little bit of fun to be had with this one. It's it's starting to have fun with itself. Right, right. Which I like that. I think a slasher really works very well when it starts having more fun with the whole thing. <laughs> yes. You know, and as these movies go on, especially the sixth one, because the sixth one is Looney Tunes. He's doing some shit in it. <laughs> is that where he goes to space? No, no, that's like the tenth one. <laughs> oh my Jesus. <laughs> but like by the sixth one, we're really having some fun. Oh yeah. You know, because he's smashing people through like 
metal and you can see the shape of their face in it. It's it's good stuff. <laughs> nice. But anyway, like, you know, like they would play this song at like gay clubs, at little disco parties and stuff like that. And a band called Neil Bog still includes this in one of their uh, their live shows. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we start off at a cr- Crystal Lake convenience store kind of thing mm-hmm. that these people own. And they yeah, live- like a little supermarket. Yes, and they live right by there. So a man named Harold is getting yelled at by his wife because he's messing up the laundry on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> and the wife is watching the news, and they're talking about eight murders at Crystal Lake. They call it the most brutal and heinous crime in local history. Then she hears something weird outside, but she goes to fucking investigate. This is a rote slasher movie. <laughs> like, you go to investigate the spooky noises. You don't yes. yell or anything like that. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> I mean, that shit annoys the fuck. Or like when a girl is searching for her boyfriend and she's yelling his name for like the 50th fucking time. It's like, look, yes. look, look, Karen. <laughs> if Dave didn't fucking answer by now, he's not. He's dead. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> In real life, that's what you would do. You would call my name once and then you'd run. <laughs> like, well, he's not answering. I'm out. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, this was the first time a Friday the 13th film wasn't shot on the East Coast where it takes place. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, the Friday the 13th uh, series, well, for the most part, you know, obviously we go to space, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> And then the franchise literally goes to hell after, like, before that one. But, um, no, like, this one, uh, you know, the Friday the 13th as a whole it takes place in Jersey. Oh. You know, yeah, that's where it's set. It's in Jersey. Okay. And, uh, but this one, and it's, I think the other ones were shot in Connecticut is where they were shot. But anyway, this one was shot on the West Coast. In fact, uh, this this one was shot at the Valoise. I can't pronounce that word. <laughs> Movie Ranch in Saugus, California. So you can definitely feel it when we actually get to the lake. You kind of feel like this is very man-made because later there's like a – well, you can definitely see it in the lake itself. Oh, yeah. You know, like it's very man-made. <laughs> it's very small. Like oh, very they don't small. show like a yeah. full lake. Like at the first two, we're seeing a big shot of a lake and stuff like, like that. Like a real lake. Yeah, yeah, a real lake. And I can't remember where that first one was shot, but it was shot on, in, on location in like New Jersey at a certain lake, uh, at a campgrounds, I believe. But um, But no, we're not seeing that. We're just seeing a little dock going into some water and stuff. And so... It, it, you definitely feel it right there. Right. Well, I, I think you feel it the most there. But anyway, uh, now these grocery store scenes you see here, uh, those were shot at a small market in Green Valley, California. I believe it's now the Green Valley Cafe, I think. I, I, I like the... I like the feeling of this little supermarket thing because I don't know if you've been on like float trips and stuff where you're going through the hills and stuff to get to the river and there's these little supermarkets off to the side. Like, I don't even know if they're still there anymore <laughs> after COVID. Who knows? Well, there's a convenience store right by the Rocky Point where we go to the lake at. Is it one of those, like, privately owned little convenience? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- those places. I love those places for some reason. I, I couldn't <laughs> tell you why. Like, you go in and they're probably selling fresh bait right next to the sandwiches. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good it stuff. It just smells like fish and Yeah, just fish, some pee around. Like I remember one time my mom was like talking about this trip they took to the lake and she stopped by one of those places. She was like, Yeah, and their bathroom just smelled like fish. I was like, probably because the lake. Yeah, the, it's the lake, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But anyway. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, so basically they shot here in California because they were trying to deflate the cost of filming the movie for 3D. You know, they were trying to balance that whole thing out because shooting this in 3D, as cheap as it looks nowadays, <laughs> it was very expensive. Right. At the time. You have to have special equipment and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was much cheaper to shoot at California at the time, too, which is not the case nowadays. Right. Um, <laughs> I think the cheapest place in the world to shoot is now New Zealand. I think that's where you're going to have to go to shoot on the cheap. <laughs> but um, now, now that newscaster you see, though, earlier, mm-hmm. that's none other than director Steve Miner. 
Yeah, he was okay. a yeah, he was a huge fan of Alfred Hitchcock. So he kind of did this as an homage. You know, Hitchcock would famously cameo in all his films, like in the background somewhere or oh. uh, yeah, walk by checking his watch. I <laughs> love the Hitchcock cameos. They're good stuff. I I think Minor being a Hitchcock fan really brought something to this franchise. Because if you notice a lot of this movie, Jason is a shadowy figure in the background half the time. Mm-hmm. He's he's qu- he's hidden most of the time until he gets that hockey mask later on. You know, he is poor force yeah. out there, yeah. And man, once he puts that hockey mask on, that shit's <laughs> scary. Yes. Like it's funny cuz like through most of this movie and you do see his face in these earlier scenes and mm-hmm. stuff. But uh through most of this movie he's he's scary, but I the only thing that's keeping him scary is that shadowy thing that Steve Miner does. Cuz he's here. hiding and Yeah, because I yeah. mean, you'll see him from the corner or you'll see him from the point of view and stuff like that. You're not seeing him dead on. No. Or anything. And he's very far away most of the time when you do see him. Yeah. And it just it just makes you feel like through at least the first half of this movie that Jason is just constantly around. Yes. And it's like yes. it, it creates some tension that like <laughs> it's really funny to talk about like creating like tension in this these real cinematic elements in these franchises. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually what helps like Friday the 13th stick away from all the other uh, slasher franchises that are take place in camp, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So Harold's in the store and he's feeding the fish and just being stupid. (laughs) I love Harold. I'm actually kind of sad he dies. (laughs) Because I feel like this is me as a shop owner. (laughs) I I don't know. So, of course, we see Jason lurking around. Well, Harold finds a bunny. Well, they're his rabbits, but it's like in the store. So he goes to put it back in the cage and he notices that the other rabbits are dead so he opens up the cage to see what's going on and this snake jumps out of the cage (laughs) and this is where i stopped watching the 3d part really yes was it because it scared you or were you getting a headache no because it scared me you stopped watching the 3d because it scared you yes (laughs) i didn't expect a snake to come popping out at me i i Honestly, okay, so I own the Blu-ray of this. We're not talking like we didn't like buy a projector and, <laughs> right. and shit like that for a big old 3D movie. No, I own the 3D the Blu-ray, which came with like the red and blue 3D glasses. Yeah. So nothing special. But man, that 3D is effective. Like yeah. it's funny because it took years before I actually saw this in 3D because those early releases, it wasn't in 3D. Yeah. I think the only way you could see it in 3D was an old thing called a uh, Oh, fuck what the hell was that format it was an early format i think before fucking uh laser disc in fact uh vhd that's what it was called it was called vhd which is a video disc system or something like that which is kind of like laser disc only it's a little i think it's a little smaller okay you know, early early shit you guys <laughs> <laughs> And I think VHD was mostly uh, relegated to Japan. I don't think it was really sold here in the States. It didn't really catch on over here. So he um, <laughs> he runs out, r- runs through the house because he has to take a shit. Uh-huh. So while he's shitting. You get, and by the way, <laughs> you get to see a man taking a shit in 3D in this film. And it wasn't you, that and interesting. And you hear the flip plops. The the plip plops. Yeah, you heard the plip plops. The like I I can't believe the sound design in this film. Already, it's a masterpiece <laughs> because you you're hearing a you're seeing a man take a shit in 3D. I don't think there's any other franchise that we'd actually get to see that. I mean, I don't need to see a man shitting know. in 3D. I feel like nobody talks about it, but I think this is the first movie where you see somebody take a shit in 3D. Probably the first. Now, Jackass 3D would uh, perfect it <laughs> later on. But... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that new jackass that's coming out, that looks great. <laughs> it looks great. All the boys are old, though. I yes. feel like I've grown with them. Like, <laughs> I'm like, this is great. Oh, it's good times. God. But anyway. So while he's shitting, he hears a noise and he gets up to check it out. And does not wipe his ass, by the way. Yeah. They do that a lot in these movies when they're taking shits. It's. <laughs> I understand that, that, that like, we don't want to watch them wipe their ass. I feel ass, like that's but... a movie thing. Because you see in other movies they do this shit. Where they just, like, pull up their pants. It's like, that, that man did not wipe his ass. <laughs> right. That dude is walking around with a dirty ass. <laughs> like... <laughs> so, anyway. Now, maybe, maybe this is what gets him killed. Like, maybe Probably. Jason walks in and he's like, oh, you didn't wipe. <laughs> ah, gross. <laughs> 
Ew. He doesn't sound like that. Oh, I forgot. I did. I did give Jason a, a voice back in the day uh, for the part two, and it was Carl from Sling Blade. Still doesn't sound like that either. Mm-mm. You didn't wipe your butt. <laughs> that nasty. Anyway, <laughs> Harold ends up getting cleavered in the chest. So the wife goes to see what's happening, and she ends up getting stabbed in the back of the neck. Which some very inventive kills here. Yes. Uh, I, I, this is the, uh, they've all had some really great kills, especially that first one with Tom Savini working on the effects, uh, especially if you get to see the uncut version. Obviously, the MPAA fucks these things in the face. <laughs> yes. And I believe the only way to see a lot of the uh, uncut stuff that was left out is to buy the Scream Factory collection of these movies which i'm not by i bought i bought this whole <laughs> franchise twice already don't do it again i'm not buying anymore i'm sorry you guys i don't care what got left out i'm sticking with my old dvds i'm done <laughs> <laughs> i'm done buying all these fucking movies watch but, in six months he'll have them yeah because screen factory's like oh okay we hear you we hear you here's some new artwork <sighs> <laughs> new artwork isn't going to win me over Scream Factory. Yes, it is. Well, how about twelve new commentaries? Like, <laughs> you know what? Fine, fine, <laughs> fucking fine. <laughs> You've convinced me because I do that when I double buy something because it has like new commentaries and new special features. Because I'm like, fucking whatever. God damn it. <laughs> Guess I'll fucking get thanks, Scream Factory robbing me. Like you're acting like you're mad. You're not mad. You're like, ooh, new That's commentary. True. That's true. New art. I get the same jolt when I buy new DVDs and new movies. Like, like I think it's like the same thing heroin people get. I, I, Only there's no downside to this besides maybe stacks of movies collapsing upon me. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a really, really... And a real danger. And your wife murdering you. Oh, I forgot about my wife. Um, <laughs> Precisely. No, I was saying we just move the kids out of their room and I'll just take that and put shelves in there. It'll be all right. Yeah, because fuck those kids, right? Yeah, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. You're terrible. <laughs> not really. I'm not really going to do that. I might build a house out in the backyard just for movies. <laughs> but then you're going to have to have an air conditioner because you're going to be like, they're going to melt. Well, yeah, I'll figure that out. <laughs> They're gonna <laughs> got air air control anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, um, now you like you said you watched this in three D, and, and I did only watch part of it in three D yeah. because it. Okay, the glasses to me are weird. I don't wear glasses, uh-huh. so and I don't even wear sunglasses very often because. Well, it's just weird to my face. Yeah, I understand. Well, I was I was also kind of worried about you doing this because I don't know with your epilepsy, does this fuck you up? You know, because it's red and blue. Yeah, it's really weird. And I made the mistake. Uh-huh. I was already partway through the movie and I was like, okay, I'm going to take the glasses off and it's not going to be so bad. Oh, it's fucking terrible. Oh, you can't watch them without the glasses. <laughs> so I ended up not really watching it, uh-huh. just listening to it. That wasn't a good idea. No, but, no. You got to just switch it right to the 2D. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, both of us don't watch uh, 3D movies a lot because like for me, I get headaches because of my astigmatism. Oh, yeah. You know, and sometimes certain things in 3D fuck me up for some reason. But anyway. <laughs> so my question is, uh-huh. I know this is weird, but you wear glasses. Do you put the 3D glasses over your regular glasses or under your regular glasses? I put them over. And it kind of sucks for me because when I do that, I only have small windows to view the movie through. Like well, you with only the have small paper. windows to view them through with those little 3D glasses anyway. But decrease these windows. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like, if they were right on my eyes, like where they're supposed to be, I could see better. Like, but so, like, I think I need to get some, like, I don't know. I need to get contacts, first of all. Right. I've got to get contacts. We just can't afford shit because of my <laughs> movie addiction. But <laughs> but, but no, like, um, it's it's difficult for me with that as well, you know. But that snake scene, that, got a, that always gets a jump out of me, too. Yeah. In 3D, of course. Well, I didn't expect it because uh-huh. I thought it was going to be like Jason killed the rabbits. Yeah. I didn't understand. expect a fucking snake. Well, like, like I was saying earlier, you know, like with this, this, the 3D effects in this movie are great. 
like yeah. for what they are. And um, honestly, like this movie, if you haven't seen it in 3D, do that because I think this movie really, really succeeds in 3D. You know, because a yeah. lot of people, a lot of fans of the series don't consider this one very good because most of us, like myself, didn't really see this in 3D until much later. Right. Because like I said, the whole point of this movie was 3D. So if you watch it in 2D, there's a lot of things that just don't make sense what they're doing, <laughs> yes. like the yo-yo thing later on. Yeah. <laughs> and juggling. Like we spend a <laughs> long shot of them juggling. <laughs> or or a wallet coming right at you. <laughs> Yeah, and in this in a scene coming up, there these kids are like playing baseball or whatever, and the baseball bat is like right in your face. Yeah, yeah, and, they, and you're like, what? They hold on that for a while. You're yes. like, what the? But in 3D, it makes sense, right? Because without it, it kind of just looks like they're going for like an art house kind of movie or something. <laughs> right. Somebody's doing something weird. But anyway, um, now, uh, now Steve Suskind plays Harold here, the doomed food loving bunny wrangler. Um, and now, now if Suskind looks familiar to you all, that's because he's played or he played a ton of little parts in sitcoms, including Married with Children, Seinfeld, Friends. Uh, and he also was a voice actor. Um, I think he voiced the floor manager for uh, Monsters Incorporated. And uh, oh, that's cool. yeah. Also, for you Bob's Burgers fans, I, I'm not a big Bob's Burger no fan but i understand the appeal but uh for you guys who are fans of that show he was the basis for bob belcher <laughs> like the, the, he's the basis for the designs of that character oh wow yeah um also his overbearing snack deprive <laughs> depriving wife here because she steals like <laughs> what ding dongs from him a donut <laughs> a donut let the man eat his donuts he's about to die <laughs> But she doesn't know that. Although I don't know, maybe maybe he maybe the not wiping his ass thing has been a problem for years. Who knows? She's like, <laughs> it's nasty. If you're not going to wipe your ass, at least he's healthy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but um, <laughs> sorry, but uh, that's she's played by Pearl or uh, Perla Walter, who also played a lot of bit parts in her career, but mostly in TV cop dramas like Hill Street Blues and Savage Streets. It's it's kind of funny. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So sometime later, which we realize is the next day, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know at the time, a group of kids pull up in a van to pick up their friend uh, to go camping for the weekend. Chris, who is one of the girls, has something happen to her, had something happen to her yeah. at the camp, but she says she's fine. And then there's this nerdy guy with him. His name is Shelly. And he <laughs> has a mask on. It, he ends up scaring them. Which is funny because, I mean, we can cut to the chase. I mean, uh, Jason gets his mask from Shelly because Shelly brings that hockey mask with him. But he brought two masks here. So if you think about it in this universe, Jason had his pick of masks. He could have picked yes. this first mask, which is one of those clear serial killer looking masks. Yeah. You know, which would have been what kind of franchise would we have then? <laughs> Well, I think that th the reason for the mask in the first, mm -hmm. well, no, he, he was just, never mind. Well, if you notice throughout these series, you know, because everybody's like, well, why does he even fucking bother with a mask? You know, um, but if you notice, uh, like in certain scenes, especially early on in this movie, there's a part where um, uh, Harold's wife, I don't even think she has a name in this. Um, she's she's looking around and stuff and you do see Jason hiding. Yeah. But you see, he's kind of hiding his head most of the time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's ashamed of his face. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. That's what I and I think maybe he thinks like if he hides his face, you can't see him or something like that. You know that kind right. of stuff, which is really weird because uh, talking about that now because I'm thinking, and with Chris's character, like, are we dealing with trauma in this movie? <laughs> yeah. There is a, a subplot about trauma in this movie that feels way the fuck out of place in a Friday the Thirteenth feature because usually, like, even in that second one. What? Are you joking? Like, it feels very weird. Are you joking? No. The whole thing is about fucking trauma. Oh, okay, Brittany. I need your From reading here. From number one to uh, okay, probably all it. of them. Go for it. I, I like this. Okay. What uh, What do you mean? What do you mean? Because I I wouldn't pick it up on that. See, because I feel like the first one is about more about like uh, revenge, like uh, his mother getting revenge for the camp counselor letting him drown or so she thinks. But you got to wonder. If That's she, trauma. Why wouldn't he come out and like say, hey, I'm alive? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, because trauma. 
Oh, man. Because of his mother? Because of who she is? Oh, my God. Yes. You, all of you're it. giving a whole new view for the Friday the 13th franchise. I said like four words. Yes. It's all trauma based. I mean, you haven't gotten into some of the sequels. Oh, my God. You're right. Because with uh, Tommy Jarvis in some of the sequels, he is tra- he's been traumatized by his encounter with Jason in the next film. Yes. Oh, my God. Hey, you want another epiphany? What? All the Nightmare on Elm Streets too. trauma. Okay, we've got. To, I've got to sit down and watch these in a whole new. Uh, Brittany has opened my mind. I didn't even do it. And what's funny? If you go back and listen to our episode on Mandy, I was just going on about shit that didn't make any sense <laughs> to anybody else. <laughs> but with Friday the Thirteenth, Brittany had to teach me that there's trauma lessons underneath this whole. Thing. That's the whole thing. That's why they're tiptoeing around Chris this whole movie. That's that's. See, I didn't pick up on that at all. What about the second movie? The trauma from the mama. Oh, yeah, because he keeps his mom heads because supposedly yes. he saw her get beheaded. Yes. Wow, dude. Wow. <laughs> Friday the 13th goes deep. <laughs> I don't think. We're getting deep. I don't think it was. I think it was pretty open. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome, I think though. it was all pretty open That's there. why I like this doing the show sometimes. I get a different <laughs> perspective here. Um, wow. I don't know what movie you were watching. <laughs> but anyway. What did you think it was based on? Just murder intent? Pretty much. Like, fucking. Like, you get murdered if you fuck or smoke weed. I mean, I thought that was the whole point. Yes, but why does he get mad? Because they fucking smoke weed. Because, because his camp, mother. Well, the camp counselors were fucking and smoking weed when they were supposed to be watching him. And his mother told him that those were bad things. So she traumatized him in his childhood. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, my mind has been blown. Let's get back to the movie. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> so they walk up to pick up their friend Vera mm-hmm. and her mom says, no, she's not going. But Vera comes out and they leave anyway because she's like, yeah, fuck this. She's going to regret that later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they turn around and they think the van's on fire because there's smoke billowing out of it. Yeah. They go to check it out and it's really just two of their friends smoking weed in the back. Which I don't even feel like they're that close to these two people. Did you notice that in this movie? They are very like, it feels like those stoner people only came because maybe those were the stoner people's van. Maybe. But it's, yeah, you might <laughs> be right because I'm like, besides this, this is the most screen time they share with these stoners. Like, because <laughs> the stoners are kind of oh, just doing their own thing when yes. they get there. Which is really funny. <laughs> yes. I think maybe they like borrowed the van from them. Maybe. You're probably right. That's yeah. probably, yeah. I think they wanted to make a storyline about one of them being pregnant. Because they mention yes. it like twice here. Yes, which which makes a uh, uh, like I said, there's a little elements here that are darker than most of these other mil- movies. Because later, I mean, that woman who's pregnant gets fucking murdered. But like we we mention it twice here. I can't figure out which one it is. I'm guessing it's Deb. Um, yeah, it's Deb. But then they never talk about it again. Yeah, and I don't know if they just slip that in to be kind of like. I don't know, shocking to the teenage crowds watching this. Like, oh, she pregnant? Right. But then nothing else comes of it. So yeah. I didn't mention Besides it. Besides the knowledge that Jason gets a two for one deal later on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I didn't mention it because it was pointless. It's dead ended. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially because like they're supposed to be going on dates here. Like, yes. uh, I think they, they fucking blind dated Shelly with Vera. Yes. Which is. Don't do that to Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> or to Vera. Or to Vera. Poor Shelly, you don't blind date someone like this. You don't send Shelly on a blind date, man. You don't do that. No. You know, Shelly is a, he needs to meet somebody who notices him <laughs> and is accepting of him because he, he, he's he got issues. He's got some underlining trauma we need to discuss, but yes. he, we don't quite get there. But anyway. Um, you might notice though we have a all brunette cast in this thing, which is uh, quite different because usually we have w- at least one bubbly blonde running around, right? Um, which is funny because uh, Jenny in the last one w- was blonde, but she's not really she's more level headed than anybody in that movie. <laughs> That's why she lived. Interesting. Like I said, Friday the Thirteenth goes a little deeper than I thought. But anyway, 
<laughs> now, wow. now Popescu uh, had said that uh, casting was based more on looks than talent, which was the opposite of what he had going, you know, and it, it's usually every slasher. It's always based on looks. Like when you cast yeah. these people, you get a bunch of pretty people out in the woods and you murder them. Um, <laughs> Petra's idea of the characters were, like I said, were kind of at odds with Steve Miner because he was more wanting like more character development, but you don't really have a lot of character development room in a Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Chris, our lead, uh, played by Dana Kimmel, uh, she was cast because Steve Miner had seen her in Sweet 16, another slasher film that honestly doesn't get enough talk, in my opinion. Uh, I first saw this like a couple of years ago, and it's it's a very weird, creepy-ass movie. Like, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the role of Debbie, or Deb, you have Tracy Savage, who had mostly been a child actor, and I think after this she went on to uh, do news. You know, the news broadcasts and stuff like that. Yes. And then, of course, the most memorable of them all, we've already talked about him, but uh, Shelly, who's played by Larry Zerner. And now, Zerner had been discovered on a street corner handing out flyers for uh, a showing of a horror movie. And so they just approached him and were like, hey, you, do you want to be in one of these <laughs> yourself? <laughs> And of course, oh, he jumped on that shit. Least little teenage dream. I know. <laughs> like, I feel really connected with Shelly in this movie. I, I, know. I feel like, and and that's the funny thing, is because uh, you'll you'll meet people who are kind of like, uh, who kind of they either hate Shelly or they love him. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no in between. Nobody's just kind of all right with Shelly. <laughs> Well, he's fucking stupid, so yeah. Yeah, he's very stupid. I think it's the self-esteem thing that really fucks him up. Self-esteem thing? He, no, he needs to stop fucking around. He does fuck around a lot. <laughs> he does fuck around joking with people and shit like that, but um, I don't know. It's not funny. I think it's funny. <laughs> Although I was the one who came. So, so when I was younger, I did something like this where I came running out and I was babysitting my niece, uh, I'm not gonna, well, oh, sorry. Well, the, yeah, whatever. Nobody knows her. <laughs> but um, I was babysitting my niece at the time, who I think was like our son's age, four yeah. or five. And I did this special effects makeup that made it look like my throat was slit open. Mm -hmm. And so I come running out of my be uh, bedroom, <laughs> just, ah, and just blood spewing from my neck. <laughs> and of course, my niece is like fucking freaking out and crying and shit. <laughs> and I'm not thinking, because I'm like 14 at the time. Yeah. I'm not thinking. This this is kind of traumatic. <laughs> like, my mom was pissed. <laughs> pissed at me. <laughs> she was like, you cannot do that. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> was Jordan scared of you after that? Mm -mm. Oh, that's No, weird. she was never scared of me. But <laughs> I'm going to have to ask her if she remembers that. I, I don't know. She might. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Larry Zerner. Uh, who plays Shelley? He he's now a very successful Hollywood attorney, and keeps us all updated on the court drama going on on who owns Friday the Thirteenth. You know the Sean S. Cunningham stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Nice. He he. Like, if you guys want to know more about that lawsuit or how that's going, follow Zerner on uh Twitter. He keeps everybody up to date, which it's not still not good. I don't know if <laughs> if we'll have another Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> who Do knows? we need another one? Yes. I do. I do. <laughs> Especially now because you put the drama thing in. Although I don't know. Jason Goes to Hell is not about drama. <laughs> Are you sure? No, I don't think so. Maybe you need to watch it and tell me because <laughs> Clayton Duke has a problem in that movie. Um, anyway. Because he's traumatized? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. There's a whole thing about a donut and a little girl. I don't... Anyway. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But but like I said, you know, Shelly's my favorite character of all these people in this movie. Now, do you have a favorite in this one? I feel like the first, you know, the first two, you kind of just stick with the main final girl, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that becomes your favorite character. But in this one, we really start getting characters that kind of act different from everybody else. Like they're not just the same cut and paste <laughs> person. You right. Know? I don't know. Yeah. I can't lie. I, I, no. I don't like, I like Jason. Yeah. I like Jason. And and there is, <laughs> and there is a subplot with Chris that was almost in this movie because people were liking Jason at mm -hmm. this point. You know, people were liking the killer, 
Right. And that's one weird part about slasher movies that unlike any other movie or any other horror movie, even <laughs> like where you really start loving the killer. Right. right? <laughs> Which is very disturbing. But um, <laughs> but uh, there is a subplot that I'll talk about later on that like. Because they knew that and they were trying to get people to hate Jason because they were trying to end this franchise. Um, oh, yeah. With this one and the next one. They were trying to wrap it all up. Well, they didn't do a very good job. <laughs> no. Not after like 12 something <laughs> movies. So the kids are driving to the lake and smoking weed. When the cops roll up behind them with lights on, so they all freak out, start eating the weed. Have you ever eaten no. weed? I've never have. I've heard no. it's bad for you. It's bad for you? Yeah, I, heard, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or if it was just like somebody trying to keep me from eating weed. But because <laughs> I was like, what would happen if I ate this? Because you see it in the movies all the time. That's how people try to hide from the cops, even mm -hmm. though I think the cop's going to know if he walks up, you smell on weed and have weed in your teeth. But <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, it's oregano. <laughs> <laughs> but bad for you? I yeah, don't think yeah. so. They said it like it'll give you st uh, like stomach problems or something. It could, yeah, because you just ingested a bunch of fucking weed. Would you get high from eating weed? That's my question. If we eat weed all the time. I'm not eating weed. What are you talking about? In edibles. Yeah, but that's the, the that's been processed. You know, you you get the oil and stuff from the weed itself. But like, I'm pretty sure if you chew it, you can get high, at I, least a little bit. I wonder if it takes a lot more. Is yeah, that at least a little. Because now I'm like, why isn't everybody just chewing their weed? Because like, did you want to chew a dried house plant? Oh, good point. <laughs> this is a good point. <laughs> weed time with Lee and Brittany. Do you remember that chicken? That my mom made when my gallbladder was messed up and she decided she was going to make weed infused chicken. Oh, God. And it tasted like an ashtray. Yeah. I remember that because I was like, how do you fuck up chicken? This is gross. <laughs> Why did she do that in the first place? I have no fucking I don't clip. know. Your mom does a lot of weird things <laughs> where she thinks it's going to work. <laughs> it just it it ne never no. works. But that's what it would be like if you just ate the weed. Oh, good point. That's well, why I mean, people you can eat just... mushrooms. I mean, that's a thing. Yeah, but a lot of times people cook those mushrooms. What if you took mushrooms and made a soup out of it? Do you think you would fucking just fly off the earth if you fucking ate mushroom soup? Fly off the earth. And we're talking about a psilocybin, psil psilocybin, psilocybin mushroom. Yeah, psilocybin mushrooms, not just regular mushrooms. I think not. No? I mean, we need to have a whole podcast about drugs because we... <laughs> We can do that on shooting the shit next week. We need to get a tweaker in here to really educate us. No. Like, because we don't know about the harder stuff. So we need a tweaker in here to literally, like, could you imagine that? That'd be the most annoying podcast ever. <laughs> Man, I don't know. You, you guys got like five bucks? <laughs> I need five bucks. This is a nice pin. <laughs> like, all right, Rodney, calm down. We got to talk about the drug. Anyway, let's get. <laughs> Oh, oh God. Anyway, they as they're pulling over, the mm -hmm. cops just speed past them. So they just <laughs> ate all their weed for no reason. <laughs> so as they pass by the convenience store, they see cops and EMS taking out the dead bodies of Harold and his wife. Mm -hmm. So they drive on and stop before they run over a man laying in the road. <laughs> they get out, they get him up, and he pulls his eyeball out to show him what he found. <laughs> So they freak out, run to the van, and he's trying to warn them to go back from where yeah, they came he's a, from. Yeah, he's our doomsayer, of course. Yes. Uh, Abel, I think, is his name. And honestly, Abel, I, I don't remember the name of the guy who plays Abel here, but he does he not look like like a backwoods Donald Pleasance like, uh, who played Sam Loomis in Halloween? <laughs> Yeah, he I looks guess like so. like a backwoods Doctor Loomis. I guess so, Michael. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, because I mean, we got to have a doomsayer because uh, Crazy Ralph is dead. He died in the uh, second movie, so you know we got to yeah, have somebody. Poor Ralph. Yeah, I know, poor Crazy. You're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> You're all doomed. You're all doomed. But uh, leave it up to teenagers to head out to Crystal Lake a day or two after a mass murder. Like, yeah, this, this has been making the news. It's been established. But where are the police officers? You're right. What you you mentioned this while we were watching this because you were like, wouldn't they close this motherfucker down? Right. 
don't know. Maybe. No, apparently not. Apparently not. Maybe this is a different part of the lake. It, it could be. Yeah, well, because it is. The sign it is a doesn't different, say yeah, Crystal Lake. It is a different part of the lake. Yeah. Because it's not Crystal Lake. I think it's it's probably on the lake, but it's a right. different area, which. It's a different it, entry point. Yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's because it's called like Higgins something, right? Yeah. The, yeah. I can't remember the name at the moment, but like <laughs> I, it is but a these, different part. But you would still would think that they would close all the campgrounds down. You would think so because they were like the maniacs still at large on the TV. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't they just block this whole motherfucker off? I don't know. Maybe it's like a Jaws situation where they don't want to close down for the weekend. Um, it's dumb. <laughs> this is a long fucking weekend, by the way, because this starts on a Friday. Like with the first movie. Mm-hmm. Or not with the first movie, but with the second movie. I think the second movie actually takes place. Oh, man. We talked about this in the sequel, I think, about the timeline, <laughs> how it's all fucky. But anyway. Uh, now... Uh, now, most of the buildings that you're going to see here in this little camp, uh, they were built for this movie. You know, like they constructed these little place for this movie. And shooting was kind of a hassle because the local bee and snake population weren't in a hurry to get out of everyone's way. Oh, no. So, you know, bees delayed shooting by a day or two. And then most of the crew carried guns with them to deal with snakes. <gasps> so you had that going on. And <laughs> uh, one of the cabins actually uh, burnt down, you know. Years later, I think a fan went in there and tried to start a fucking fire in the fake fireplace. And oh, my down. God. Uh, but you can still you can still go there and you can still tour the set, you know, where this is at, you know, at the, at the ranch. That's cool. Yeah. So they roll up to the cabin and we see someone is inside already waiting for them. Mm-hmm. Chris goes inside the cabin to put her stuff away and gets scared. And it's her boyfriend, Rick. I'm going to call him her summertime boyfriend. Summertime boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't ha- hesitate at all to start pressuring her into sex. Dude, right a fucking way, man. Just just zip it up for a second. Like, yeah. let her get unpacked. <laughs> She's like, uh, she tells him that she needs a little bit of time to get used to him in this place again. Um, And then all the campers pick their rooms and start to unpack. And yeah. Stuff. And, and Chris hasn't let anybody know what exactly happened to her at this place. But yeah, she better fucking hurry up because oh, but, it's annoying. But Rick, Rick knows. No. Like Rick knows something has happened to her. That's right. Traumatic. He knows something has Back happened. Back on trauma yeah. again. But <laughs> he knows something <laughs> traumatic has happened to her. But his first thing is like, let's fuck. Yes. Because what does he say? Like, I can't take that many cold showers. Yes. <laughs> it's like, dude, dude calm down. He can only take so many cold showers. He's so rapey. But <laughs> like, really right. I think this down. character, in fact, this character's name was, uh, you know, his name is Rick now. But like before in the script, it was Derek. But they shortened it to Rick because Rick is easier to scream. <laughs> like when she's screaming later on, it's oh. less syllables, you know. Oh, okay. You know, you get good Rick. Yeah. Or, you know, it sounds weird when you're Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. <laughs> you know, you get that. It's it's not as good as the guy in a later sequel. He's killing me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you'll okay. learn what that is later on. But... <laughs> Oh, but uh, like you said, Rick is pretty rapey. Anyway, now with all this new tech, of course, there were tons of problems while shooting. You know, cameras would malfunction. And if you didn't shoot certain scenes just right, the 3D effect wouldn't work. So keep that in mind. That means they would have to do multiple takes, take after take for certain parts like the juggling. Uh, There's a part later on where Shelly tosses his wallet to Vera. Um they had to keep doing that because to get the 3D to work just right, you had to dead on have something come right at the camera. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? So, and of course, like when you try to throw something at somebody and, and try to make it look natural as <laughs> best you can, right. it's not going to go dead straight. It, right. It's going to go time. all over the place. Like, in fact. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I have experienced that firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hit a target with it. It's just very hard. In my nose, man. Yeah, in, in my your nose. nose. I remember that one time I pulled out and shot in your mouth. That was cool. That was cool, man. Anyway, we're not having that I feel that like I needed a medal for that. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's okay. Turn back on the podcast. Don't, don't go away. Don't go away. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, you had to just dead on get it. And and there's a scene later on with the juggling, mm-hmm. um, that was supposed to be paddle balls. 
Oh shit! Like, but think about it. Like when you're hitting a paddle ball, you you're not cartoonishly getting it to go straight each time. <laughs> right. So like, so they had to turn it to juggling, which uh, luckily Larry Zerner was a juggler. Of course he yeah, was. Of course, multi talented that man. Because he d- never mind. What? <laughs> I was going to say he ain't never had no pussy in his life. Oh, I'm sure Larry Zerner was dragging it in. After this movie. Fuck yeah. But not before. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know before Larry Zerner. He knows how to juggle. <laughs> I used to know how to juggle. I, of course you do. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Before the sex happened. That's true. Once <laughs> pussy happens, you're, it's over. <laughs> just, you don't need to know how yeah, to juggle. Yeah, you don't need to know how to juggle. You just learn how to do that really well and everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Rick and Chris are loading hay into the barn and Rick is being a creep as usual. Yeah. He wants her to have sex with him three times a day to meet their needs. And this line is delivered like a joke, but it's really weird. <laughs> yes. Like, Rick, you're really weirding me the fuck out, man. And he really says three hours a day. And then he's like, once in the morning and two in the evening. <laughs> Rick, you, you, wait till you get married, my friend. That's not going to happen. <laughs> married with kids and you're just trying finding times <laughs> to fuck. You'd be lucky for three times a week. <laughs> God. And, and not by like dislike like it's just literally you can't you're working (laughs) you get home you're both fucking tired you'll sit there you'll lay in bed you'll talk about fucking you'll talk about it you're like i really want to fuck then you just both fall asleep cuddling (laughs) like it's just it's how it goes you gotta wait for the kids to be like possessed by their electronics for a certain amount of time and maybe you can sneak away and stuff and then they knock on the door yeah because they're sex star anyway we're we're getting into a bitch sesh let's get back to the movie (laughs) So they hear a scream and they go running into the cabin. Chris is looking around and she ends up finding she ends up finding Shelly with an axe in his head. And everyone's comes right at me and they're all freaking out. But it was just a prank. And now everybody's mad at Shelly. <laughs> yeah, you fucking dumbass. I don't know. It's kind of funny to me. It is funny. It's funny yeah. because they don't know what's about to happen. Yeah, and I don't they don't really act like Because this is the first movie, like, this is one of the only movies where they don't really mention Jason at all. They don't talk about Jason. They don't know about Jason. Yeah, they don't talk about his killing and stuff like that. So, also, it's not such in bad taste for him to do this because they don't know what's happening. Right. So, I don't understand why they're so mad. (laughs) Like, (laughs) They're mad at Shelly because of Chris. Oh, okay. Well, maybe if she let everybody know what fucking happened, like, right. then he wouldn't do that. I'm not right. saying Shelly's in the right. I'm just saying <laughs> he didn't know your tra- traumatic past. <laughs> maybe let him know. Right. So Vera leaves to go to town or go to the store or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Shelly begs to go with her. Yeah. So he goes with her. There is a nice little, like, back and forth with her and Shelly where she kind of does kind of see something good in him. It's yeah. Yeah, I think she's like, okay, he's my date. Yeah, let me. I should be nice. Maybe to him. I should help this dude out. He's just. <laughs> right. So Chris and Deb end up going for a walk, and Chris is complaining about Shelly, mm-hmm. and Deb tells her that Shelly doesn't know what happened to her, and he just wants attention. See, that's what I'm saying. I think Vera's yeah. got it right here. No, Deb. Deb, sorry. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> well, Vera and Shelly are at the store, and they. Meet a little motorcycle gang people. Right, right. There's three of them. And they start picking on them. And as they leave, Shelly runs over one of their bikes. The guy is pissed and smashes the window out of this car, which is Rick's car. (laughs) Yeah, which he's got Rick's window smashed. Which, no, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Go ahead. Okay. And this pisses Shelly off. So he turns around the car, almost runs the guy over and hits his bike again. And I got I, I strangely feel like this imposing biker gang here is supposed to be menacing and stuff, but really they don't feel like much of a threat at first. They're just kind of <laughs> assholes. Right. Because like nothing happens to them. They didn't steal anything. Yeah, they don't steal anything. Them. They just kind of make fun of them a little bit. Yeah. And then they go about their business. But because really what happens 
is when Shelly hits their bikes, that makes them mad. Right. If he would have just left <laughs> them just alone. didn't hit their bikes, it would have been fun. <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, I-, I love the whole, this line this cashier says. I don't know why this line cracks me out each time, <laughs> where she's like, we don't accept no food stamps. <laughs> And you could tell it's like a California person trying to do a Southern accent or something. <laughs> yes. It's like, wait, first of all, this is supposed to be Jersey. Second of all, <laughs> second of all, like what the fuck? We don't accept no food stamps just right away. Like, I wasn't going to pay wasn't- with no food stamps. Hang on. <laughs> right. Don't worry. I'm not going to give you no food stamps. <laughs> I think it was a racist thing. Was it? Because Vero's Mexican. Oh. Maybe. I don't know. God, you're finding all these little <laughs> underlining things in this fucking movie. Anyway. Pretty sure it was racist. Anyway, in the original script, though, uh, you know, after they get out of here in the Volkswagen. Um, well, actually, this scene where they're driving away and stuff like this, this was like one of the first sequences they filmed. But anyway, uh, in the original script, the motorcycle gang were supposed to chase Shelly and Vera down the road. You know, oh. in this car and Shelly ends up popping a champagne cork at them and causing them to crash, you know? Well, that's not what happened. No, no. Because, and I don't know why they didn't film that. That would have been kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So Shelly and Vera drive up to the cabin. And if you look close, you can see Jason peering out of the barn. I love those little shots because there's also like a little scene where like you see Jason's shadow. In, like, the glass and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. that's what I said. Like, he create like, Steve Miner creates, like, a tension here. Yes. Like, it's really cool. He's always watching. He's watching. I'm always watching you. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Anyway. Jason gonna get you, especially if he didn't wash your ass. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So Rick is pissed about the car and Mm -hmm. he decides that he's going to leave and Chris begs him to stay. So they decide to take the car somewhere and go for a ride. He's probably like, oh, am I going to get wet? Am I going to get wet here? Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. He's a fucking creep. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) um, Andy and Deb are going to go swimming. Alone. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Then we see someone walking by the van and you think it's Jason, but it's just really one of the motorcycle dudes with a gas can. And then they all three show up and steal the gas out of the van. And I love the idea because the first thing you see him with is he's about to start siphoning this gas with a lit cigarette in his mouth. Because a lit cigarette's not yeah. going to go up in flames. Well, okay. But in movie, <laughs> movie-wise, well, that's it true. will. Yeah. That's true. Movie-wise, any type of uh, object that's on fire will set off some gas. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So Fox from the gang, she goes to check out the barn, and she's walking around, and we see someone else is in there with her. Dun, dun, dun. Jason. <laughs> she ends up falling and almost landing face first on a pitchfork, which... Yeah, some foreshadowing. That's what I was, that's the word I was looking for. I just didn't catch it. I got you, I got you. (laughs) So she hears something up on the landing and she goes to check it out. And she ends up swinging from the hay lift. And one of the guys tells her to stop. And then when he looks back up, she's gone. So he goes to look for her in the loft and he sees her and she's dead with a pitchfork through her throat. Yeah. Dun, dun. Yeah. She's stabbed up to the wall. That, that That's a pretty cool shot. Yeah, because she's just like hanging Yeah, in. yeah. Then he gets pitchforked through the stomach. Which is cool, man. Oh, Dick, yeah. I, I like the use of different uh, weapons. J- Jason does this in all these yes. movies. He doesn't just use a machete or anything. He's he's using like a, anything around, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to. I mean, utilize what's in He's like the you. Martha Stewart, really. You know? Oh, my he's God. He's like a Martha Stewart of... Uh, of slashers. I think that's the first time anybody's ever compared Jason to Martha Stewart. <laughs> just, just Jason figuring things out. I'm uh, c- what am I going to kill these people with? Now, what would Martha Stewart do? <laughs> Improvise. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, now, now, that was a real pitchfork, but the center was collapsible. 
Okay. You know, so it was a trick pitchfork, I guess. <laughs> but um, no, uh, they hung up actress Gloria Charles, who plays Fox, from a harness here to get that shot of her stabbed to the wall. And she said the hardest part was not giggling while she was <laughs> hanging there. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. So the other motorcycle guy comes up to the barn with the gas cans. And when they don't open the door, he goes in to check it out. And his friend gets thrown down on him and he screams when he sees the girl. He grabs a machete, turns around, and there's Jason. Jason just punches him or hits him in the head with something. Yeah. Um, And he's knocked out. Jason beats him in the head till he's dead. Or we think he's dead. We think know. he's dead. This guy fucking... Jason thinks he's dead too. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> he's a fighter. Yeah. Because J- well, how long was he in that barn? Because we go a little while before. <laughs> a long time. Like, like was he too? Was he just hanging out, <laughs> waiting for my chance? I guess so. <laughs> so Jason looks outside and he sees Andy and Deb, and Andy wants to go in the barn, but doesn't. Deb doesn't want to, so they don't go in. <laughs> he's like, damn it. <laughs> I could have got everybody right here. <laughs> right. This would have been great. I could have ended the day, gone home, watched some TV, really, <laughs> really had a productive damn day. But now, now I got to wait. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you really think Jason's like, ah, oh, fuck. No, he's like waiting. He has the patience <laughs> of a serial killer. He really does. Jason has a lot of patience. Oh, yeah. Like, like because he really could just go kill all these people real quick. There's <laughs> right. nothing to stop him because as we see in this movie, a lot of things don't kill Jason. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. Uh, so stepping into the role of Jason Voorhees this time around is Richard Brooker. Now, now Brooker was more nimble since he was originally a trapeze artist and stuntman. Nice. He stood about 6'3", so Jason could be more menacing in this movie, a lot taller than everybody else. And I love the character in this one because this one, he – like. As opposed to the last one, and not saying anything bad about the last person who played Jason or anything like mm-hmm. that. Like, it, it was just fine. But um, in this one, you can tell he's actually more calculated and stuff in the he's, things he does. It's the cal- character development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell he's thinking about things before he does it. It seemed like in that last one, just him going around murdering people. I mean, to me, which was fine. It's because he was <laughs> just a little... A little virgin murderer. That's true. Yeah, this is his first stint out. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, but <laughs> he's already done this once before. He he knows what he's doing now. Well, yeah, which <laughs> I really like the prosthetics and stuff they do on Rooker's face in this because, like, it, it is really scary. <laughs> like Jason's is face really though? scary. Although he is kind of looking just kind of like a, a hillbilly. A little bit, just like a crazed. He hillbilly. looks like a uh, fucking what's his name from the Goonies? Sloth. Yes. <laughs> oh shit! You just expecting Jason to pop out, baby? Woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he looked like to me. <laughs> hey, you guys, <laughs> just machete yes. the head. Yes. Now that would be funny. I'm glad Jason <laughs> doesn't talk through these. Yeah, it would cheapen it. It would be so like, weird. Well, with Freddy Krueger, I think that was the mistake a lot of slashers do when they have them talk. Because I think you're relegated to make the slasher do one-liners. Yeah. You know, yeah. At, well, not so much in that first Friday or Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, but in the other ones, he just gets progressively funnier. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, but I think Jason doesn't really do that. I mean, he gets a little funny. like. But not he's not talking, so no, no, no. And I think if Jason talked, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be right. as good. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, could you imagine he like hit somebody with a machete in this? This is like, and now you got a splitting headache or something. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of you. <laughs> oh, this is enough of that. So it's dark now, and Rick and Chris are sitting outside. Rick wants to know why she came back, and she says to prove herself, to prove to herself that she is strong. And he's frustrated because he says that she has a barrier up and he wants to break through. With his penis. Yes. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. I really do think that's all Rick cares about in this fucking movie. Yes. Because, like, you could <laughs> – I don't know if the actor played him like this, but you can tell Rick is just – trying to get her to fucking let it go like <laughs> but i think it's for his own gain here. yeah because he wants to fuck god damn rick why could you just go jerk off man <laughs> but he's t- he's taking enough cold showers okay 
Why? Go jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to have a cold shower. Go jerk off and it's all good. I don't know. Be like, here, take a take take some booby pictures and I will never ask for sex again. <laughs> <laughs> So back at the cabin, this two t- the two stoner p- people are passed out. Um, and then Andy and Shelly are juggling, and the other <laughs> girls are just watching. They're bored. Uh-huh. Deb goes up to Andy and starts hitting on him to make him stop. Yeah. Shelly tells Vera that he likes her a lot, and she ends up cutting him off <laughs> when he's going <laughs> to ask her a question. And she says she's going to go outside. And when she gets back, they can talk. <laughs> then we see through the window. Okay. I, I kind of have to set this up. Uh-huh. You can s- We're on the outside of the cabin. Mm-hmm. And you can see inside the cabin. Yeah. In the window. And between the camera and the window, we see Jason. Yeah. But it's only like a shadow of Jason. And you yeah. can tell that Jason is watching Shelly. Because we can see Shelly mm-hmm. inside the cabin. And like I said, just more of that. Steve Miner thing that he started like with that real creepy like yeah it's really yeah. creepy how he treats Jason in this movie uh, the first half so then Andy and Deb start to do it Jeez. in their hammock which is their bed Um, so we know they're gonna die soon and can you have sex in a hammock would it be possible like I feel like that's a lot of trouble you could have spooning sex yeah I suppose so but what do you do? There's you no. You just be like swaying with the. I guess. <laughs> like, wouldn't somebody would fall? I don't know. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself because I'm not graceful. I would. I I would break my penis. Like I would <laughs> fall on my dick and just snap it. <laughs> like that's what would happen. But I don't know. I don't know. Hammock fucking just sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't think it would work. Right. It's probably just as bad as trampoline fucking. You see, that sounds bad, too. Yeah. And I'm sure someone's out there like I had sex on a trampoline. It was great. And it's like, yeah, but how old were you? Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you're like in your teenage, any sex is great. Like, I was like 16 and it was not that great. See, because there's no resistance. You need something. Yes. You need some kind of resistance underneath the other person because somebody's on top. So, like, you need somebody who's on bottom not driving into the literal <laughs> earth. <laughs> so, I feel like hammock sex is just bad. It's just like shower sex, you know? In movies, oh they make God. shower sex look amazing. Like, it's not. No, shower, shower, you start in the shower fucking around and then you move to a bed or something like or is that is just nice. because i'm too short and it might be because i don't know because i'm not hung like a horse i'm sure if you have some dude with a 10 inch dick you're good i guess I get, even that I don't know. it just the, the the positions alone you gotta have a big shower i feel like it's, i don't know i never liked it it sucks <laughs> anyway. it's a waste of time <laughs> so it, it, it is funny to think uh, about now but at the time th- they were crafting slasher formulas in these early films oh yeah you know and i think that's why these early friday the 13th movies they feel kind of experimental like especially this third one not just the 3d and stuff like that but they really they really are taking this character to see where he can go oh yeah like and and i, I appreciate that uh, but yes we know now that uh, sex gets you killed in a slasher movie. Oh, yeah. That is a big Real no-no. <laughs> yes. And uh, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris and Rick are still talking, and she says that she should have told him everything. And she says that she wants him to know and understand what happened. Fucking tell us what happened, bitch. <laughs> I've been waiting half this fucking movie to figure out what the fuck happened to you. And if it ain't good, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Spoiler alert, not that good. It's not. And I'll I'll, I'll explain <laughs> why it's not, because there was another part to that. Oh. You know, that's a little, but it was way out of the character. Like, it was not Jason. Like, that's not <laughs> what Jason does. But we'll get to it. So she goes into the story and says that her and her parents got into a fight. Her mom slapped her, so she ran off to make them worry about her. Mm-hmm. She ended up under an oak tree falling asleep in the woods. She wakes up when she hears footsteps, and then she sees an ugly man that started to chase her. He had a knife, but she ended up kicking it out of his hands, and she ran away. He ended up catching her and dragging her 
um, until she blacked out. When she woke up, she was in her own bed and her parents never talked about about what happened. And she's not even quite sure what happened. Yeah. So then Rick's car battery dies <laughs> and he says that they have to walk back to the cabin. And of course, the person that she got attacked by was Jason. Yes. You know, and we see that in the flashback that's going on right here. But um, so, OK, so we see Chris had an early encounter with him, but she didn't die. So you, all of a sudden you're like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why wouldn't he just killed her? Right. Like, this is Jason. So, and, and of course this always felt kind of weird to me, but in the original script, uh, and this is why this part feels really kind of strange because she, he didn't kill her. But in the original script, Chris was supposed to be sexually assaulted by Jason. And the way that they're talking, it makes it sound it feels like, like that. a sexual assault happened Yeah, <laughs> because her parents wouldn't talk about it or anything like that. Right. Um, which Dana Kimmel rightfully so felt like that was going a bit too far. You know, having this character rape somebody randomly. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Because he's not done that before. Yeah. And, and filmmakers luckily agreed because, like I said, that it, it feels way out of the character. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't feel like this character. Because, I mean, this character is supposed to have the mentality of, like, well, I mean, thinking about it, he kind of has the mentality of a child. Yeah. If you think about it that way, I think we talked about this in our Fuck, Mary and Kill with Jason and Michael Myers <laughs> and Freddy. <laughs> Where it's like Jason's special, so you'd be like fucking a kid. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. But anyway, um, <laughs> go listen to our previous episodes to hear that. But uh, you no, know, it just feels, it doesn't feel like this character. It's fucking weird. But the reason they did it, and they may actually have saved the franchise by changing their minds later, but the reason that they took it, like they were going to do that, were that like the previous films had performed really well. And, you know, each ending has that feeling of finality, even though they kind of leave it open for a sequel. But this one, they kind of figured like maybe they would, they wanted it to end. But the audience, like I said earlier in the show, like, Obviously, audiences are getting like more and more attached to the serial killer and rooting for him half the time. So they wanted something to make people angry at Jason and not like him and not want to see him return. Right. And a rape is about as far. <laughs> I guess that's as far as you can go. I don't know. I think maybe Jason walking into a nursery and killing babies would have been better. But <laughs> right. <laughs> it would have been less fucking weird. I agree. But, <laughs> but when you think about it. Um, that rape subplot, like it, when you think about it, like if they had went with that and really drove people away from Jason, like there might not have been such an excitement for this character later on. You know, right. it's just something to think about it. And maybe right. there would be because we got Freddy Krueger who may or may not be molesting children before he kills them. <laughs> They don't really yes. go into that. Thank God they don't fucking go into that in those movies. <laughs> right. But, you know, we already have that. Uh, so it may not have ended the franchise, but who knows? But, but you know, thinking about that rape subplot really does kind of highlight why she has an aversion to her own boyfriend, how she's not wanting to have sex with him at all. Right. And that's what I was yeah, thinking, too. Yeah. yeah. It highlights, like, the trauma she had and stuff. It makes that more solid. Mm -hmm. But. We don't need it. <laughs> no, we don't. It would have felt like that would have ruined this movie for me. Like just like Jason raped me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Right. And then like later sequels, because he never shows any sexual. I mean, he's killing people when they have sex. So right. like uh, that's a whole thing of this character. So like why would all of a sudden Jason get hard? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> I don't want that. No. I don't want my no. Jason to have a hard on. It's just. <laughs> No, thank I don't even you. want to think he has a dick, man. That's weird. Just slimy Jason dick. Ugh. Ugh. Especially when he becomes a zombie later in the franchise. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Back at the cabin, one of the stoners gets up to use, I put, the water closet. Because <laughs> that's what it's called. The WC. Which is weird because this cabin has, like, electricity and all the amenities, but it doesn't have, have a bathroom? bathroom? No, I guess not. <laughs> no indoor plumbing here. No. I thought, no, it does have a bathroom. They have a shower. What the fuck is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. They have a shower. Yeah, they do. What the fuck? He just wanted to use no the shower outside. Yeah. So I know uh, how to say one sentence in French. Where did this come from? Okay. <laughs> it contains the word water closet. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why. That makes sense. And That's why I wrote water closet. Okay. It's permettez-moi aller au WC. 
Ooh, I already got a hard on. What was that? What'd that mean? Permit me to use the water closet, oh, shit. please. Okay. <laughs> French is such a sexy language. <clears throat> and I know I did not say it. Like right you guys now. need to watch more French horror movies because that whole those whole all those movies are sexy but just for that. <laughs> Has nothing to do with sex, but it's sexy. <laughs> like that that language. Woo. Um. Anyway, so he lights a joint. Of course. And then he hears something. So he comes out of there. By the way, he has no fucking underwear on. When he pulls up his pants. Weird... When he pulls up his pants and he zips, you do not see any underwear. You don't see any junk either, but you don't see any fucking underwear. I, I, can't, I can't say anything because sometimes I go commando. You know, it's just fine. You ain't got no underwear, but you still got to wear pants because public. So you got to throw on something. And I don't know that he wiped. Again. I, I think this is really a movie thing. I really want to watch movies because, it, I mean, you don't get a lot of shitting in movies. Right. You know, like John Wick isn't stopping to take a shit in the middle of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but I feel like that's a movie thing because I think uh, there's just another movie where nobody wipes. Like they just get up. Like, like uh, again. So Jason does everybody a favor here because this man did not wipe his ass. Anyway. <laughs> So he comes out of there and he sees someone walking into the barn and he thinks it's Shelly. Then he runs into his girlfriend and tells her that they decided to give Shelly a piece of his own a piece of his own medicine because mm -hmm. they think he's going to trick them again or whatever. Yeah. So they go into the barn and the girl grabs an axe and thinks she's going to scare Shelly with it. But they don't see him. First of all, like when you're trying to scare your friends, don't grab real weapons. That just seems like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> They're giving him a piece of his own medicine, though. But, I mean, what happens if he just pops out of nowhere and she gets scared with this big-ass axe? Well, that's what he she, gets. She's about to hatch it, Shelly. That's what he gets. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so the boyfriend's freaked out, and he wants to go back to the cabin. Well, let's talk for a second about okay. why I did not name these characters. I don't know their names. Uh, you know, it's it's not a big deal. No. <laughs> like, that's the thing about uh, Friday the 13th movies. It's like, it's not a huge deal that you know all these characters. I think this guy's name's Clark. I don't I, know the girl's yeah, name. Yeah, I don't quite remember the girl's name. Especially these two characters. Like I said, they just feel so disconnected from everybody else. They are. They were yeah. fucking sleeping this whole time. And... Like, you're going to use our van. I guess we'll just go fucking smoke weed out in the woods. It'll be fun. <laughs> they didn't even fuck. D they don't fuck. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they make popcorn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, every time somebody makes popcorn in a movie, I get hungry. Because like popcorn. Even, yeah, because popcorn's delicious. Anyway. <laughs> but what the fuck? <laughs> so Vera's hanging out on the dock, and something comes up and grabs her foot. It ends up being Shelly. And this is a good way to get your teeth knocked in, Shelly. Because... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he is wearing a hockey mask. Uh -huh. So Vera calls him a jerk, and he is just talking down upon himself he's like i'm stupid blah 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 stop fucking people okay stop fucking with people yeah i feel like shelly like <laughs> like i feel like if you're gonna do this shit you have to have self-esteem because yeah. nobody likes a, a low self-esteem fucking prankster like right. it, nobody likes that that's annoying <laughs> well, like i said i like shelly but like if i was doing this shit like i had more self-esteem about it like <laughs> Like and yeah. and like if somebody's pranking you and then all of a sudden they're like I just do it for attention because nobody likes me like all of a sudden it's just like that would make you even more pissed off yeah. about the prank. I think that's why they were more pissed yeah. off about it because now he's playing the victim. Yeah, because it's like God damn it, Shelly, <laughs> God annoying. damn it. <laughs> so he walks over to the barn because he thinks something is going on. He goes inside and shuts the door. And Ver Vera is looking at Shelly's wallet th that he handed her earlier mm -hmm. in the store. And she accidentally drops it into the lake and tr tries to go after it. Well, Jason walks out with the hockey mask on and she thinks it's Shelly and she's talking to him I like Shelly. I don't Shelley. know how. I don't know why she would think this is Shelly because this man is six foot three. He's built. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and Shelly's a little chubby dude. Like, why would you think? I'd immediately be like, well, that's not Shelly. I'm going to go the other way. <laughs> Maybe because it was dark. I guess. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, he has a harpoon gun mm. and he shoots her through the eye with it. And and yes, I always love that you can see the wire work in this movie. And you can see the wire work here because oh, uh, yeah. Richard Brooker had to take uh, this... Uh, 
this harpoon kite gun that's rigged up to a wire. He sets it on the wire and then shoots it and it goes right toward the camera. And that's how you get that. And it, it's a, it's an awesome 3d shot. If you watch this movie all the way through in 3d. Right. Um, <laughs> again, though, that wire, seeing the wires gives me that comfort feel. And I hate it when they remove <laughs> wires. You can see it versions. in the snake too. Yeah. Yeah. It, I just hate it when they remove the wires in the updated versions. Cause like I'm, you're not making it more real. <laughs> like, right. When is everyone, when is anyone who loves these old movies been like, I just wish somebody would digitally remove these wires. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm anyway. sure there's people like that. Yeah, you're fucking right. But uh, the kills in this one, uh, you know, they're getting more inventive. Like yes. as we, and they get super inventive as we go through this series. That's one of the biggest highlights of Friday the 13th is the kills get more and more inventive as we go. And uh, each one of them has a couple of kills that stand out, you know, like each one of these movies. And this one has two that really stick out for me. Um, this one being my favorite, though, the harpoon through the eye. <laughs> Man. It's pretty great. Yeah, it is great. Now, of course, this is horror movie history that we were watching here as Jason walks across the dock in the now iconic hockey mask. You know? <laughs> uh, lots of people like to debate on who put the mask on Jason. You know, because everybody's like, well, it was Steve Miner. Steve Miner did it and stuff. And yeah, yeah, Steve Miner signed off on it. But no, nobody was really excited, you know, about the bag Jason wore in part two. You know, none of the cat, the crew and stuff like that. They just needed something to put on his head. Right. So they got the bag. Right. So nobody was like super excited and nobody really wanted the bag back. You know, <laughs> the idea was to always have him masked, but they couldn't quite come up with something. Plus, uh, they kind of felt like uh, the, the latex Richard Brooker wore. It made him look way too much like a movie monster and less like uh, less menacing. You know. Yeah, he looked like what's his name from the Goonies. Yeah, yeah, you got sloth running around sloth, murdering people. That's his name. I can yeah. never remember. His hey, name. you guys, Harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, and actually, Stan Winston was brought on early on to sculpt the Jason face. That and that version didn't really make the final cut. I think you can see it in some deleted scenes and stuff later on. Like I said, <laughs> I don't own those Scream Factory discs, so y'all fill me in on Twitter about that. But, <laughs> um, but the mask was actually from Martin J. Sand Sadoff, you know, uh, the 3D guy. Oh, okay, tech. okay. I was like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> the, the director of 3D on this movie. Now, Sadoff and a few other people on the crew, uh, they, they were big hockey fans, you know, and Sadoff had a Detroit Red Wings goalie mask on him, and he brought that to the set and brought it to Steve Miner. Nice. You know? And uh, Miner loved it, but uh, the traditional hockey mask, because if you see a regular hockey mask, uh, they're a bit small. Yes, you know, they're they're yes. a bit small. And he said in test footage, it, it looked odd, you know, in the test shots that they shot. So makeup effects director Doug White used a technique called vacuum form to enlarge the mask and make it kind of wider to cover more of his face. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, and they created a new mold to make this mask with. And after Doug finished the molds, they put red triangles on it to make it look, look even more unique. You know? oh. And that's why this hockey mask doesn't look like your traditional hockey mask. <laughs> right. um, but then that was placed over Brooker's latex mask and then the rest is history. You know, I mean, from here on out, you get hockey mask Jason and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and I like I like that it comes from a character he kills, like because we obviously know that signifies that Shelly's been killed, that him he's wearing the mask now. Right. Um, and I like it that it comes from. It's just somebody he killed because that's like – he's just like, whoa, a mask. Right. <laughs> this is kind of neat. I like to imagine he's just in the mirror before all this. <laughs> now that looks cool. Now they, see, Jason, you're looking good now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so now we have Jason's look fully realized in this because like he wears these same type of clothes, this same hockey mask through the entire series. Right. Um, that, I think that was the one of the biggest mistakes that Remake did. Because, like, he just finds it in some redneck's a attic. <laughs> like, I thought you were about to say ass. I was like, what? Yeah, he pulls it out of a dude's ass. You're like, that sounds pretty inventive, actually. <laughs> I did not think that. No? No. <laughs> no, I don't know. That remake, <laughs> that remake, I have a love-hate relationship with that remake because mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You're making a Friday the 13th movie in 2009. You need to have more interesting kills. People are oh, just yeah. getting stabbed and hatcheted in that movie. This is it's nothing new. So, you know, get something new in right. a fucking Jason movie. You, you <laughs> get, get crazy with it. Yes. You know. yes. But anyway. So Andy and Deb are done doing it <laughs> in the hammock. Uh, they both got off, by the way. Thank goodness. 
Anyway, <laughs> Deb goes to take a shower. Jason walks in the cabin and goes at, straight up the stairs. Oh, yeah. And Andy's being silly and walking around on his hands like a handstand. Mm-hmm. And Jason ends up cutting him down the middle. Which good on Jason, because I'm sorry, people who can do who can walk on their hands. Why is that so annoying to me? Is it because I can't do it? Because I've always been a little I, I heavy, guess. you know. I guess I don't know. I don't know. It's just fucking annoying. <laughs> and it's like you're not in the circuit. Stop. <laughs> it's just so fucking annoying to me. I don't know why. It's one of those things. And so when Jason cuts this dude down the middle, it's just like yes. Nice. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> So Deb gets done with her shower and is looking for Andy. She sits down to wait and she reads a magazine. By the way, by the way. <laughs> Brittany got pissed off. <laughs> Why? Oh, you got mad at me because I have I've invaded your brain with all this horror. Yes, that's knowledge. right. I was like, why was I mad? <laughs> so when she when I do my notes for this, mm-hmm. I pause a lot to write what's happening or whatever yeah, to yeah. sum it up. Yeah. Well, I pause it and I'm like, oh, that's a freaking Fangoria magazine. And you can barely see it when she is like sifting through the magazines Mm -hmm. on the on the counter. And I was like, is that a Fangoria magazine? You were like, yeah, yeah, it is. And then I push play and she sits down and she opens the Fangoria magazine. And I was like, I realized this before you can even (laughs) see what the fuck it is. Uh, I was just mad and proud at the same time (laughs) i know i'm proud of you i'm very proud because i didn't even have to point it out it's so great so she sits down to read this magazine and blood ends up dripping on it and she looks up and it's andy um dead above her jason then grabs her and stabs her through the back and all the way to her front which is kind of cool because he stabs her through the neck with this knife and what's really cool about this, it's it's kind of the same death that Kevin Bacon got in that first movie. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Uh, but still, like, I don't know. It just feels more unique here. I don't know. And plus, Jason gets a two for one deal with the whole pregnancy thing. So that's kind of, you know. That's so stupid. Score. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Is that in bad taste? Yes. <laughs> that I do? Okay. Anyway. Good. <laughs> Good. We're sticking to our, uh, <laughs> our, theme. Our, our theme here is just bad taste. But uh, the cutting down the middle is, it looks great. Yes. Like, well, for what you can see, obviously it's been trimmed down or at least in the version I have, like I said, I can hear you guys screaming. It's in the scream <laughs> factory. I, I, not I buying them. Not buy, I'm not j- dishing out $120 for movies I own twice, but <laughs> <laughs> I just don't feel like it. But anyway, uh, but they built a plexiglass floor to film that in because you see it from underneath, which oh, is, it's okay. a very cool shot. Like yeah. I said, there's a lot of cool shots in this movie. So Rick and Chris are walking back to the cabin and the sonar couple are making popcorn and the power goes out. The woman sends the dude down to go check it out with to go check out the fuse box. He goes down and he's a little jumpy and the girls hear something and she opens the door. It's Shelly and he has his throat slit and she tells him to stop fucking around. She thinks he's joking again. Uh, this guy's name is Chuck. I oh, finally Chuck. got okay. his I name. I thought his name was Clark for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> his name is Chuck. Chuck gets the lights on and turns around and Jason is there. And he pushes Chuck into the fuse box, electrocuting him. So the girl realizes that Shelly is dead and um, she goes looking for someone to help her. She runs into Jason and he kills her with a, a red hot fire poker. I love it. I love it. Like I said, you're getting some inventive kills in this one. Yeah. Each one is different from the other, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but I, I do love, I don't know. I'd love a good electro, electrocuting someone on a fuse box. That's fun. Is like, it? I don't know. Could you really do that? No. No. Again, okay. it's the, this, is, this is the movie. You know, okay. People don't wipe their ass and pushing someone into a fuse box <laughs> electrocutes them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If it's one of those old ones that you, you had to screw in the fuses, oh my God, those are death traps. I don't know why they even made them back then. Because but... technology was Whoa, that good? Oh, fuck. I lived in a house that was like built in 1918 <laughs> and it had one of those. And the fuse box was like above the basement, like up uh, uh, near the ceiling so you would oh, have to shit. like stand on a banister unless you had a really tall ladder to get to it so i'm standing on this banister screwing these fucking fuses in and i'm like i'm this is how i'm gonna die <laughs> this is it wow yeah <laughs> this shit's scary <laughs> anyway <laughs> so rick and chris come back and they are trying to figure out what's going on because the power's out 
and uh, they can't find anybody. Yeah. So Rick looks around and says, everyone's gone. I'm never going to get a lead now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go outside and check it out. And Chris goes uh, to like to go after him mm-hmm. a few seconds later. It, she's on the porch yelling for him. And we can see her on one, like her on the porch, and then on the side of the house. It's a cool shot. Yes, it is. Yeah. I like it a lot. Jason has Rick, and he's holding him by the mouth so he can't scream. Yeah. Um, and holding him back. Well, Chris goes back inside and shuts the door. She's like she has a bad feeling or something. And Jason crushes Rick's skull until his eye pops and, out. Oh, the eyeball scene, man, because that thing comes right at you in 3D. Yes. Um, it's just good stuff. I love a good popping an eyeball out. <laughs> and, of course, they built a whole dummy for this and stuff like that. And, yeah, I, it looks cheap. But still, again, it's just like the wire work. I love it. Like It's just <laughs> yes. so good. And he pops this dude fucking his head like a goddamn grape (laughs) (laughs) which you know we haven't really talked about the friday the 13th game very much but like in that game you can do all these kills oh that's and more it it, it's fun man that game is a blast that sounds like a good time so chris is walking around trying to figure out where everyone is she sees the bathroom is flooding and she goes in (laughs) to check it out and she finds i'm i'm confused just bloody clothes in the bathtub yeah but doesn't think that's weird. I mean, I guess she thought it was weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird shot. It's, I'll agree with you. It's kind of odd. She runs out of the bathroom and she's still looking for Rick. And she runs outside and it seems like there's a storm starting because the wind's blowing a lot. Mm-hmm. So she walks towards the barn when one of the motorcycle guys falls from the tree. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So she runs back to the cabin and she starts freaking out. And all of a sudden, Rick comes flying through the window. I, I get, uh, another thing I love. I, <laughs> I just love the indignity of Jason taking this guy. He just crushed his head and flying through the window <laughs> just to scare this chick. <laughs> and that dummy, man. That dummy great. He flew. It, uh, and you got to wonder, was Jason just like, okay, okay, any moment now, she's going to come. Hang on. Yes. Right, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Like, I want a movie where it's from Jason's point of view the whole time. Like, and you get like a voiceover, what he's thinking. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. That would be kind of a cool movie. And I, I don't hear this uh, from a lot of people uh, who talk about these movies, but these scenes, uh, they do get very tense, you know, especially towards the end of this one. You know, when she's doing the obligatory final girl finding all the dead people. <laughs> yes. Like, but still, it's just like really tense to me. And and I'm not a fan of cat and mouse in movies either. You know, where the killer, where you have a long drawn out scene where the killer's chasing down the girl and stuff like that. Yeah. Not big on it, but I, I think they do it really well. Like if you can pull it off really well, it's very good. And I think in almost all these movies, they do that so well. Yeah. You know, Chris is our final girl. And uh, what makes it tense is, though, like, you don't know what's really going to happen. Right. Because, I mean, we've seen two of these movies. And uh, in the second one, the the final girl, Alice, she gets killed by a screwdriver at the very fucking <laughs> beginning of the movie. So you honestly don't know. He could off these people. Like, he could kill her, too. I, right. It, it could end either way. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, we know now because it's not 1980. But <laughs> we get it. Yeah. Right. So then Jason crawls through the window and Chris runs upstairs. She locks herself in a closet and sees Deb in there and she's dead. So Jason starts axing the door and Chris pulls the knife out of Deb's back. Mm -hmm. And as Jason grabs the doorknob, like he sticks his hand through the door um, to open, to unlock the door. She stabs him in the hand. She chases him down the hallway and ends up stabbing him in the leg. Uh, She breaks the window in one of the bedrooms and goes to jump down. And Jason grabs her. She ends up falling because her shirt ends up ripping that he has a hold of. Right, right. So this little fucking bitch. (laughs) She goes to the door instead of fucking running away. Because, I mean, it's a slasher movie. You got to. You gotta, you gotta, what the fuck? You either got to go with the wet route she went or go upstairs. <laughs> this is the only way. <laughs> anyway, she grabs a log of wood 
And when he comes out the door, she hits him with it. Mm -hmm. And she runs to the door. Hold on. She runs to the van and, of course, is struggling with the keys because, you know. Yeah, yeah. She gets it and drives off. And she almost hits Jason, but he jumps out of the way. She drives a, a little ways and the van starts running out of gas on the bridge. So Jason catches up Burn. to her and starts choking her in the van. Which, by the way, Dana Dana Kimmel, I don't think she gets enough credit for this movie because, like, she she works hard here. Like, especially <laughs> if you watch the behind the scenes and stuff, there was moments where she fell and, like, the cast thought she got hurt, but she didn't. She just fell in the right way and stuff like that. It's Oh, nice. She works her ass off in this last part of this movie. When all she had to do was run away before. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so she crawls through the other side of the van and mm. runs away fucking finally <laughs> she runs to the barn and hides and jason comes inside and he starts tearing things apart looking for her she's on this raptor part way up high and she ends up slipping and falling jason ends up grabbing a machete and he's trying to kill her uh, but she runs up to the loft and grabs a shovel and hides yeah she knocks him out ties the rope around his neck and throws him down on the outside of the barn, like hanging him. Uh -huh. And he should be dead. Yeah. But no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And I, and I know, you know, everyone always gets me with this because my argument is Jason isn't supernatural until the sixth one. I don't think Jason becomes a zombie or whatever you want to call him. I think now he's actually considered a deadite, which if, if you want to go with the canon that uh, <laughs> Jason goes to hell sets up. But um, anyway, <laughs> but I know everyone argues with me on this because they're always like, well, how could he survive this stuff if he isn't a zombie or something? And I don't know. I, I believe I still believe that he's just a guy in these first like few movies, you know, in the fourth one, he legitimately gets killed because in the fifth one you have Roy. <laughs> it's not even Jason in the fifth one. Spoilers, everybody. <laughs> it's just it's, some dude it's named Roy. Roy. Yeah. That's but weird. um but I, I don't I really don't think he becomes supernatural to part six because he gets resurrected by lightning in that movie. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I agree, he does survive some pretty rough stuff here. But I, I think you yeah. I think you'd have a chance, maybe. I know the only thing I don't think you could really survive are the, the you know, he gets that machete in the neck and like or the shoulder in part uh two you think the machete is gonna kill him over being hung yeah maybe i don't well maybe maybe jason just has a really thick neck you know i mean he's got all those hillbilly muscles that's the thing he's been living in the hills and stuff anyway <laughs> anyway so chris goes to leave the barn mm -hmm. and when she opens the door um jason's just hanging there but he isn't dead he shows his face, gets down from the rope, grabs a machete, and goes after her. And and this is where she realizes this is the guy she saw, you know, back in yes, the day. Yes, yes. But <laughs> the one motorcycle dude who we thought was dead. Like I said, he's just hanging out, I guess. <laughs> he jumps out and tries to attack Jason, but Jason cuts his hand off. Then machetes him to death. Yeah, yeah. He's going to make sure he's dead now. Chris grabs an axe she finds and hits jason in the head with it and he's still going after her until um he falls over yeah and, and just to add on to what i said earlier about jason surviving shit like I, I don't know i look at him in these movies like he's just like a, a sh you know a shark he's like the human equivalent of jaws you know he just keeps fucking going pain isn't a big deal to him <laughs> so so that's why i think maybe he could survive some of this stuff i don't know we're not going to get into that argument but <laughs> But but can we talk about the motorcycle guy? How the fuck did he survive all this? Like up until this point, like he he got beat in that scene earlier. Like man, I have no real bad. Idea. I don't know. And and now he gets his hand cut off and macheted. But you think you think he could come back for a sequel though? That'd be kind of cool. You know, have like you know, kind of zombie versus zombie kind of thing going on. That'd be cool. that'd be kind of cool. Somebody resurrect the motorcycle guy from part three. <laughs> Anywho, uh, this axe wound follows Jason for the rest of the franchise. Uh, yeah, you know, if you look in his uh, his 
mask. hockey mask throughout the most of the, well most of the franchise i think they fuck it up in freddy versus jason but um <laughs> he always has that hatchet mark so to have yeah. a like to have a realistic jason mask you got to have that hatchet mark in it and i know i got that jason <laughs> mask i'm not I, I feel like i'm gonna break that thing if i try to put a hatchet mark in it <laughs> you could put it on and we could make the uh, your britney's just trying to kill me <laughs> In an I'm inventive trying way. to make you a very really inventive. cool mask. Very inventive. Uh, but <laughs> you want to be realistic. <laughs> you got a hatchet. Okay, do me. <laughs> anyway. How many views would we get on that? Um, uh, a live murder? Probably a ton. Would we go viral? Oh, we'd go viral really quick. Everybody who kills themselves goes viral. <laughs> oh, I hate America. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So Chris goes to the water and gets in the canoe the next morning she wakes up and she's freaking out mm -hmm. she ends up seeing jason in the cabin and starts freaking him out more which by the way when he sees her he starts like I, uh he has this like it really scared the shit out of my sister <laughs> this part of the movie where he's like <laughs> and he comes running out at her after her. yeah he's like excited yeah so uh, he runs out and she's trying to, to get uh, stuck from a tree that her canoe is stuck on. Mm -hmm. She looks back and she actually doesn't see anything because Jason's not there. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, Jason's dead mom jumps out of the water and pulls Chris in. Dun, dun, dun. So sometime later, officers are at the cabin and Chris is still alive. Yeah, it was all a dream. Right. Yeah. She's freaking out, and they put her in the back of a police car to figure out what's going on. Then we see Jason just laying there on the ground in the barn with that axe in his head. Yeah, and they kind of imply they kind of leave it open, you know. Like I, I mean, in in their way, you know, they kind of imply it could keep keep going, you know. Right. You get that eerie shot of the lake and stuff. But anyway, um, now there was an alternate ending where Chris is dreaming, of course, still, and she walks through the cabin door, but Jason busts in and cuts her head off. Oh damn! You know, in this dream. And you you get you got to see his face a little too much there, so they kind of didn't like it, you know, the way it looked and stuff, oh, and yeah. so they didn't use that version. Uh, but a lot of fans didn't really care for this ending, like this dream sequence, because why would Chris know about Jason's mom? That's true. Like that's an interesting fact, and that has always kind of bugged me a little bit. But anyway, one question <laughs> lingers: What happened to Chris? She's not in part four. Like, what happened to Jenny? She's not in part three. Like, uh, the open ended. Like, we we should have Jenny and Chris come back in a sequel at some point. You know, but they're just maybe in the, with the maybe they're they, just in the mental institution. Maybe maybe they team up with Tommy Jarvis and they resurrect the motorcycle guy, and then they got their own Jason on their side. You know, ooh, I'm writing this script. <laughs> this is writing itself right now. I'll get sued, but I'll write it. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Friday the 13th, Part 3 in 3D, released theatrically in the U.S. on uh, Friday the 13th, August of 1982. Uh, the first film of the franchise to actually open on a Friday the 13th, by the way. Nice. Uh, it was the first ever 3D film to get a wide domestic release and helped it uh, knock off reigning champ of uh, the box office, Steven Spielberg's E.T. from the oh. number one spot. Yeah, it overtook et <laughs> wow yeah it's funny to think about like back in the day you know the slashers could like fucking overtake a a steven spielberg movie that, that just wouldn't happen these days well uh, marvel movies would overtake a steven spielberg <laughs> movie part of its charm though i think really part of its charm was the 3d you know it brought audiences into the film every time there's a gimmick like that it really does help make money for the film well yeah and honestly to this day that's like we said earlier that's the best way to watch it in the 3d i mean mm -hmm. you can watch it in a 2d and if 3d bothers your head just watch a little bit of the 3d to get an idea but oh yeah for sure it really does lend itself to the the gimmick you know oh yeah it works very well what's really funny to think about though you know like everybody is like you know, when the Saw franchise was huge and it was coming out every year, everybody was like, why do we get, well, why are they making these movies every year? It's funny to think back, but like Friday the 13th was kind of like this. You know, the first movie came out in 1980. Uh, the second one came out in 81. This one came out in 82. Uh, you took a year off and the final chapter came off in 84. You know, uh, 85, A New Beginning, 86, Jason Lives, 88. 
the new blood, 89, Jason takes Manhattan. And, you know, and we didn't see Jason come back for another like two or three years. In 93, we got Jason goes to hell. You know, and then of course okay. Jason X in two thousand two, and then the years get more and more in between. Why, there's so many movies, <laughs> but it's funny to think that like one of these movies was coming out every year in the eighties. You know, Jason reigned in the eighties, and I I do gotta say there is, I do want to see another Friday the Thirteenth movie, but also there's a problem with that because I kind of feel like Jason shouldn't exit the eighties. I agree. Like even with that remake, it felt weird. Because it's like this character needs to be in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, now, at the time, this was going to be the last Friday the 13th. Like I said, they had it in their idea that this was the last one. And, and at the rap party, Pre Mancusa said he was done. He wasn't going to produce another. And Jason was supposed to remain dead on that barn floor. But, uh, you know, as we all know, our favorite hockey mess villain <laughs> would terrify the box office once again. And Tom Savini would be coming with him. But that's a story for another episode. <laughs> so, so enough of me. What did you think of 1982's Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D? Okay. 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 All right. I didn't hate it. Okay. It was fine for right. a slasher movie. But it was a little boring. I think you felt a little bored. Yes. I mean, the killings were okay. I felt like for um, my love of slasher movies, we need more throughout the whole thing, not just at the end where everybody dies. Oh, okay. You would have much preferred like him killing people throughout. Yes. Oh, okay. I get that. You. That was my only qualm yeah, about There this. is a little slog there for a minute because you get a, bun you get a couple deaths at the very beginning. And then I think yeah. it takes a while until uh, who dies next? The bikers until the bikers get to the mm -hmm. barn. I think those are the next batch to die. Yeah. And then it takes a little longer and then you get a little bit more deaths. Like, yeah. I see what you mean. The fourth one, I think, makes up with that. Which I'm fine with. I mean, it yeah. was a fine movie. I like the fourth one's pretty cool. I mean, you got little Corey Feldman versus Jason in that movie. It's it's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> like once they introduce Tommy Jarvis, you know, um, it's it's pretty cool. Tommy Jarvis really does make the movies, and and I, I wish if they do make another one, they bring Tommy back, um, because that's what, like I said, th these movies have to stay in the eighties. There's <laughs> yeah. something weird about it being set in current times. So I would hope if yeah, somebody, that'd be weird. yeah, so if somebody makes a new one, it should be set in the eighties. I I just feel like it would feel better. Like hopefully they yeah. would. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But, you know, like, we, we've got how many more of these motherfucking movies? We have four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you start getting into Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X. And then uh, the remake, obviously. And Ugh. Freddy versus Jason. But we won't do Freddy versus Jason until we've done the entire franchise <laughs> of Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street. So that's going to be a while <laughs> before we get there. That's good. That's good. But are you excited to go throughout this franchise? Are you excited for more of Friday the 13th? Yeah. yeah. Um, which one do you think? Because you've seen, okay, you've seen more Friday the 13th movies now yeah. than you have A Nightmare on Elm Street. And those are the big two out of the big four. You know, I, uh, what, I've always said the big four slashers, uh, the most famous, you know, are Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and Leatherface. Those are the biggest, most recognizable ones. And then, of course, like after that, you got Child's Play. You got your Chucky and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But those are the big four. So I think like out of the two of the big four, <laughs> Freddy and Jason, <laughs> uh, which one do you find more scarier? I'm going to have to say Michael Myers. I don't know why. Really? It freaks me out. Well, what, what about out of the two? Like I... <laughs> Oh, which two? Sorry, uh, Freddie and Jason. I kind of confused you with that whole spiel. I know. About I was like, Big wait, four. what are you talking I'm sorry, about? Sorry, I went on a tangent. But out of Freddie, <laughs> but that's interesting. We should talk about that on our next Halloween episode. Okay. But um, out of the big, out of the two, Freddie or Jason, like which one do you find more scarier? I don't know. Probably Jason, probably because he doesn't speak. That freaks me out for some reason. Yeah, I, I still, I still stand by. I'd rather be killed by Jason, because at least Jason is gonna fucking joke around about it. Right, <laughs> like, he's just gonna <laughs> fucking murder me. Maybe it's gonna be brutal. Maybe I'll just get my head chopped off. I don't know. Who knows? But like, he's not gonna make a million jokes. But he's not gonna turn into a fucking 
cockroach. <laughs> he's not going to turn me into a cockroach. He might. He's not going to turn into a fucking polar bear or some bullshit. <laughs> he's just going to get me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why Jason's more scary is because uh, Freddy to me is a little more uh, funny. Yeah. I For you. a lack of better words. I get you. Yeah. I think that's what they did wrong with Freddy versus Jason, even though I love that movie, mm -hmm. is those two together. I mean, because you got one guy who can get you while you're asleep and then one guy who can get you while you're awake. That shit's scary right there. That should be very scary, but that movie is not scary at all. Oh, really? Yeah, Freddy versus Jason has no... It, it's a horror movie, but it's not scary. Oh. Like, so that I think that's the biggest flaw they made. They could have spent a little bit more time trying to make a horror movie than just an action movie with two titans going at it, each other but anyway <laughs> but anyway until our next well I, actually what is the next movie we got coming up i don't yeah, know i mean that's the end of gimmick i i guess it's sort of a gimmick month we had that mini series and then we had two movies that centered around gimmicks so that's kind of fun uh so that's the end of july you know that's the last episode of july coming up in august though we have we have a slew of awesome movies. And of course, you will know the full lineup if you are subscribed to our Patreon. Like I always put out the full lineup of movies and, and they just got the list of all the movies that we're doing in August. But the first one on that list is Phantom of the Paradise. A okay. rock opera directed by Brian De Palma. Oh, that's a fun fucking movie. It's good. I'm hoping you like it. I don't know how many horror musicals you've ever seen in your life, but like this is, uh, we, we did the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Right. You know, and I like this better. <gasps> so this is, yeah, so this is going to be very interesting. Plus you got Paul Williams in it. I mean, they, it's, that's fun. But anyway, uh, so until next time, when we head to the paradise, I'm Lee Evans saying, stay spooky. And I'm Brittany. Stay horrific. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. To get a hold of us and submit your stories, fan mail, and death threats, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and nightofthehorrorfile.com. Our theme song was written and performed by John Brennan. Used with permission. Find John at shopjb.bandcamp.com and at badtechno.com. If you like what you hear, leave a good review wherever you listen to podcasts and share the show on your social media. See you next week.